So continuing with our layer masks, as you can see, I'm at 100% resolution. Remember the shortcut is Command-1 or Control-1 on your PC. And as you can see here, we've got a very simple mask applied to the guy layer that I can move around here. You can see what's going on. If I want to, I can remove the layer mask. And I can do so in a number of ways. One way is to actually click on this little box for the mask, drag it to the trash, and it'll ask you, uh, do you want to apply this before removing it? Well, you could just say delete, for example. And in doing so, what we've done here is completely remove the mask. If I press Command Z or Control Z on a PC, I'll return that back to the way it was. Another way of deleting a mask is to right click on it and you can delete it from this little drop down menu. However, rather than deleting the mask, you could also disable it. By disabling it, as you can see, you've got a little X here, and it shows the image as if there was no mask applied to it. However, if you want to bring that mask back, perhaps you've done a lot of work to make that mask look the way you want it to, you can then say, well, let's enable this mask. So just doing that, you can bring it all back. In certain instances, and if you remember when we were dragging this mask to the trash, it asked us if we wanted to apply the layer mask. What that means is it'll remove the mask, but your image now is looking as though the mask is still there, but it's not a mask that we can actually affect at this point. The mask is gone and the image has been damaged. Well, in this case, it looks like it's damaged. Uh, the image has been actually affected by that mask and now is this mask right here. So, Command Z, I'll just return that back to the way it was. So, what I want you to do is to just right click, delete it, and now we have the picture with no application on it. So, at this point, I can show you a few more things about working with this particular mask. One thing that we can do is not just apply the mask as we've done here and then start using brushes against it. You can actually start with a selection. Now, there are a number of ways that we can select. So, I could use the quick selection tool that we looked at a little bit earlier. Don't worry about being perfect, actually, at this point because, well, Part of what I want to be talking to you about and showing you right here is how the mask can actually do a lot of the extra work that I want to do. So at this point, I'm having a little bit of trouble with that little last selection here. That's okay because we could always zoom in. Remember, here's a shortcut working with this particular tool. If you're clicking down and when you do that, you can also click down, but we can sort of zoom in on our area. But nevertheless, I'm actually going to leave it like this for this instance because this is just a starting point. You can see I've left the ear here, and also I've left some areas here like between the legs and in between the arms that I haven't really addressed. Well, let's just start with a very simple little selection like this. And when we want to create a layer mask, but we have a selection marching around as this one is, when you click on it, take a look at what happens. Everything outside of that selection is made black, meaning you intentionally want to remove that area with the mask. But everything inside the selected area is white. So this is great for us because now we can zoom in on our area. So I can press Z or Z, and here we have our magnification zoom tool, and we can just click in a little bit. Remember, just click and slide to the right, or slide to the left, depending on how you want to zoom in. And then I'm pressing my space bar to get my hand tool up here. And at this point, you can select a brush. Actually, I'm going to work with a regular brush. Here we go. It's way too large, so you can right click and you can change the size. Or, excuse me, we can press the square bracket. And the square bracket is right here. So you'll notice when you're working with black, it's going to remove the area. So I don't want that. But to switch it, we can click on this or just press X. And I can start bringing in some of the area that I have here. Now, it's okay if you go a little farther than you want. Now, reason being is that you can always either zoom in or even if you just work with a very small tool, 
as I have right here. I'll make it even smaller and I'll switch to black. Once you switch to black, you can come in here and you can start brushing out some of the areas that you don't want to keep. So just by moving around like this, don't worry if you go too far in because you can always just press X, bring some of that back. Nice and easy. So, as you can see, there's real a lot of easy work that you can do in this case. Pressing X, you can take away some of those areas. We'll refine this even more in a future example. But as you can see, that's fairly easy to do. So all of this area that's grayish, I'm just clicking along, getting rid of it. It's a rather small brush, I know, but that kind of works for us in this instance. Here, I might want to switch to white. And white will reveal, so sorry, I'll keep it in black. And underneath that, we can see that the area between his arms is now starting to become transparent. Now, if I hide the Petri dish, you can sort of see that. And if you've gone too far, that's okay. You can just move it around back again. If you want to zoom in or out again, sometimes moving without the tile, or if you do have it in there, you can see that you can get some of that. The scrubby zoom is the zoom that we saw. Notice I'm scrubbing my zoom. So here, if I want to work with this brush, switch back to my B brush tool. We don't want to hide that area. In this case, I want some white in there to bring it back. You might want to use a larger brush, so right square bracket. So as you can see, I can sort of bring back that area and then decide to press X and switch back to my white one and say, OK, now it's time for me to get rid of some of this extra space that I've got here and delete some of that. So as you can see just by switching black and white to bring back or to remove different areas that you do or do not want very easy to do. Press black, press white So we can make our brusher smaller, remember, just by working like that. We can make our brushes larger, right square bracket, switch back to white to reveal some of this area. And anything that you don't want, you can quickly remove or return based on what you have. So it's a real nice and easy way to work and very, very simple means of creating your image and masking working in this fashion. So as you can see, we've got the guy, I've got the Petri dish behind him. I can move him around. Let's go back to 100% Command 1. Notice it's not exactly 100% perfect. I could still refine it better, and we'll do that in a future episode, as I've mentioned. But nevertheless, right, you could see the area in here as opposed to in here. And you can continue working in that fashion. And if you do a really nice job, uh, you'll have a, a very smooth image. By the way, we can also do something similar just by using something like a magic wand tool. If you do happen to have you know, a lot of an area that looks pretty much, you know, the same, similar size and color. And notice these little bits here, which are a little bit too much in certain areas. Well, we could not really have to worry about that because we could just apply our mask. Actually, that's gone the other way around, so I'll just apply it this way. And any areas that need refinement, like these areas over here, you can certainly just brush them in just by using and utilizing the mask area and technique that you have right there.
So masking is very easy to work with and there are a lot of similar things that we can do with it, but there's even more that I want to show you with this and we'll do so in just a second.